I'd like to invite you to stand up in reverence to the Word of God. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Chapter, uh, verse 20. Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Thus says the word of our God. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Lord, we praise you and adore you for this moment of fellowship with your word. We ask that you may bless your people and your church. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your church may be seated. In the book of Revelations, the Lord speaks to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And in each letter to the seven churches, the Lord says the following, who has an ear, and in every letter, who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we might ask, who has an ear here? We all have, right? We actually have two, right? So we are all able to hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. But hearing is also to give heed. To believe is to trust. Because if you don't believe, if you don't trust, the project of God will not materialize in my life, in your life, in our life. So everything is based on faith and it's not through works it's by faith if I believe I will be saved and what if I don't believe am I ready I am already condemned so the word also speaks about the seven letters it, the Bible speaks about victory that's interesting isn't it in the first letter, the Lord says the following. To the one who overcomes, I will give him the right to eat of the fruit of the, the fruit of life, of the tree of life. The second letter it says, whoever overcomes is not going to receive the damage of eternal death. And the third letter he says, whoever overcomes, I will give to him what is uh, the hidden manna and I'm going to give him, give him a white stone and on the fourth he says whoever overcomes and keeps with himself my works I will give him power over the nations and on the fifth letter he says the following whoever overcomes will be dressed with white garments and in no way I will blot out his name from the book of life blessed be the name of the Lord and on the seventh letter, the Lord says the following. And whoever overcomes, I will make him foundation on the temple of my God. And from him that will never come out. And it, it, will, it was going to be written upon him, the name of my God, in the name of the seed of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven, from my God. And also my new name. And on the seventh letter, the Lord says the following. To the one who overcomes, I will give him, allow him to ascent, sit, with, sit down with me in my throne. In the same way, I, I, I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
So if you want to be a victorious, my brother, sister, maybe you entered here feeling like you're a loser, but do you want to be a victorious person? <coughs> here, what the Spirit is saying to the church. In every period in which man heard what the Lord spoke to the church through His Spirit's Holy Spirit, they were they were more than victorious. That's a, that's why Apostle Paul says the following: We are more than victorious through through the one who loved us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now in the letter of Revelation, the Lord says the following: I am at the door and I knock. Look, if you are at the door and you knock, and it's because you're not inside of the house, right? Yes or no? And what is the desire of the Lord? He wants to stay outside of your house or, or inside of a house? Outside of a life or inside of a life? On the outside, you are a loser. If he is inside of a house, you are victorious. And the Bible speaks about details of this church, the church of Laodicea. And collected a couple of information here. The church of Laodicea, it's said about with their themselves, I'm rich, I have been enriched, and I lack nothing. So in other words, the church thinks that they are self-sufficient. I don't need God. I'm already saved. I'm already saved. I don't need God. The Church of Laodicea. And the name is it interesting. Uh, a while ago, one of our pastors went out and visited the place where this, those churches were. The name of the Church of Laodicea comes from the name of a woman. And in, in the past, before this church was called Laodicea, this city was called Diopoli, Diopolis, which means City of God. But then a queen conquered this city and her name was Laodicea. So then she decided to pay an homage to herself. Now this city is going to stop being called Seed of God, and now it's going to be called Laodicea. So the people, the people, the name means the people that judge. And what is the meaning of all this? So when she, she changed, the name of, of the city from the seed of God, she changed to her own name. So God was no longer judging. Now she judges herself. So because that's why the Church of Laodicea thought that she was rich and rich and didn't need anything. That's the moment in which we're living. The people that judge the, re the rights of the peoples human rights. So she removed God from his seat and sat in God's place and demanded to be adored, venerated. So the city received, uh, she, she, the city had two rivers that come from two different locations. One came from a city called Colossus and the other was Hierapolis. From one place came hot water. I don't know if you went to a place where the water is hot. Thermal waters. They have a medicinal, uh, therapeutic, the medicinal uh, component, and they help in the health. And from the other side of the city, came cold water. Water is appropriate for a human consumption to drink. And when you speak about cold water, it speaks of a place of refreshing. 
So it was healing and refreshing. So when those waters, they mixed together, they became warm. When the water is warm, it's not cold or, or hot, so it does no, no longer heals, and you cannot quench your thirst and, or bring refreshing. So when you go to drink the, wa the warm water, you will throw it out. That's why the, the Lord says, I will throw, throw you out of my mouth. So Laodicea was a center, a commercial center that was very important. There was a lot of money, a lot of silver, gold. There was a lot of uh, precious metals in that city. But it also has a medical center that was very advanced, especially when it was related to the eyes. They were specialists on the eyes. And the city was also produced a lot of garments, clothing. That's why the Lord Jesus, when Jesus looks to that church of that time, which is the church that represents the church of our days. When Jesus looks to the man today of this time in which we're living, Jesus saw that man that thinks that does not need God, that they have everything. Beside other things, they are poor, blind, and naked. And the Lord gave an advice there. He said the following, You're poor because the riches that you have is insufficient to allow you to enter into my kingdom and inherit my eternity. You are blind. Why? Because every technology, because of all culture and knowledge is not enough to take men out of darkness. And it's naked. Why? Because there is no human garment that can replace the garments of salvation that was given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So then he, he's going to give you an advice. And the Bible says, my brother, that the Lord is rich, great in, in counsel, and mighty in power. So he gives an advice to the people of that time, for the people that was living this time in which we're living, this prophetic moment. He says, there are, I advise that you buy from me gold that was proven on fire. Because the, the, go, the go, gold that is out there is only good for this, this earth to resolve the problems here. But the gold that was proven on fire is the experience that the Lord gives. He wants to give to me, to you, to each one of us, the experience of the power through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says the following white garments. So this garment that hides your nakedness, right, can only be given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that whoever had their garments white were the ones who washed their garments and whited them out in the blood of the Lamb. White garment, only if it is whited out in the blood of Jesus. Because only the blood of Jesus that can purify us, wipe us out, purify, clean, purify, sanctify, and allow us to be in the presence of God. And that was a reproach. So he comes and gives a reproach to the church. So it is interesting that that church, when you look at the others, you see that the prior series, there was a person called Je Jezebel are there. But the church no longer had a Je Jezebel. There was also a church that had a doc doctrine of Balaam. But this church no longer had problem with this church of the doctrine of Balaam. And this church did not need to go back to the first law because they already knew the first law. But it was a church that was uh, comfortable. They were happy in their comfort zone. They were thinking that they were in a situation that was pleasing to the Lord. But many times we are like this. We say, we think that we are in a position that is pleasing to the Lord. I'm rich. I need nothing. I have everything. Everything is blue in my life. 
But when the Lord looks to me, He will see that I'm miserable. So He gives me an advice. And that's the advice the Lord is giving us tonight. And what was the advice from the Lord is that you may purchase not with your money. Because the Bible says, come and purchase without money and without price. Wine and milk. The Lord has a banquet for your life tonight. And you don't need to pay anything for this, you know, my brother and sister, because Jesus already paid a, a high price so that you could participate on this banquet, so that you would be able to enter into this feast, so that you may one day sit down on a throne with Him. But in order for all of this to take place, in order for you to receive this power from God, the gold that was proven on fire, so that you may receive a white garment to hide your nakedness and to pay for yours, mine, our sins, in order for you to be able to see God's project far away and clearly and receive this uh, eye drop from the Lord, you need to do a single thing, only one thing. Open up the door. That's all. If you open up the door, you will receive all of those benefits and all these riches from the Lord to your life. We are in the book of Revelations, and we have actually the book of Song of Solomon, and we study a lot the book of Song of Solomon, and we, we are in that moment where the Lord comes, the night comes, night falls, and it says, open up my, my sister, He knocks, he knocks at, at the door. But she does not open the door for him. And the result of this, you know what it was? She was ended up outside of the project that he had for her life. When man rejects God's project, he is also rejected. Oh, but... Isn't God love? Yes, God is love, but He is also judgment and, and justice. So there was a, con a king that was called Saul. He d did not hear, he did not give heed. He heard, but did not give heed. And the Bible says that, the Lord says that, because you rejected me, I, will, I rejected you. So when we go to the parable of the ten virgins, five enter into the wedding, but five remain outside, and they knock at the door. And they heard a voice, I do not know you. And here the Lord is telling you, I am at the door, And I knock. The decision is yours, my brother and sister. You are responsible for your own salvation. If you think that you do not need God, then leave the door closed. But And if you think that you do not need anything, then leave the door closed. If you think that you are self-sufficient, then leave the door closed. If you are rich, then leave the door closed. But if you understand that you are in need of the grace and the favor and mercy of God, then open the door for God. First, the, the God that first God reproaches, and then He comes in with mercy. And His mercy is exactly this, for you, for me, to each one of us. I am at the door. God is not distant. Jesus is not distant. If there are two or three gathered 
in my name, there I will be. And the Lord is saying, not me. He's saying, I am at the door. And what door is this? Is the door of your heart. He is here at the door of mine and our hearts. And he is knocking. If, if anybody hears his voice, it's not my voice. My voice is, has no worth. If you, if you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, a soft and tender voice that is speaking to your heart, a tender voice, a wonderful voice that is bringing peace, comfort, refreshing, relief, healing, deliverance, salvation. If you hear this voice, if you open up this door, if you give this opportunity to, so that God may enter, reside, live in your life, and above all, reign, I will enter into your house. The Lord does not break in. The Lord is not a, a robber, a criminal. He does not use violence. He does not go through a window or a chimney. He goes to the door of your heart. Because what the Lord wants, my brother and sister, what He wants is your heart. Give my son and daughter my, your heart. I am at the door and I knock. If anybody hears my voice and open the door, I will enter into their house. And the Bible says, and I will come into his house and I will make dwelling in it. And what is the consequence, consequence of this? If you allow God to enter your house and your life and your heart, what is going to happen? It is written. I will have a supper with him. The supper of the Lord had two, two elements. Which were the elements? Bread and wine. Body and blood. Church, body of Christ. Where his blood, his Holy Spirit is present. So if you are with me, if you open the, up the door, I will enter into a house and will be in fellowship with you. We're going to be together. I'm going to be beside you, help you, supporting you, helping you, answering to your needs. I will enter into your house and I will have a supper. So this banquet that the Lord is planning on having with you, with me, with each one of us. And after that, what then? So then we'll get, have a supper with him in eternity. That's God's desire. Whoever who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. To the one who overcomes, overcome what? Who is going to overcome? Who heard? I will allow him, them to be seated with me in my throne. That's the plan and the product that the Lord has for your life. The Lord has shown in a spiritual gift. The Lord has shown that there is a couple that has gone through many denominations, but the, the groom always leans on his wife in order to walk. And he does not understand why. He was not healed yet. And the Lord was showing a deficiency on his leg and he had a couple of fractures because the bone was weak and what is the meaning of this there's a man that has been seeking on man the resource that only God can give they seek another denomination, then go to another denomination, and then jump to another denomination. He gets frustrated because no man is going to resolve a problem, my brother. Only God can resolve a problem. 
but you are leaning on the faith of your wife and this has been a load for her. You need to lean on your own faith, not on, on someone else's faith. Because when you lean on someone else's faith, you're bringing a heavy load to that person. Oh, you said that God saved and I went to that church and the Lord did not resolve my problem. What God is this God that you serve? Then I went to another denomination and I got frustrated once again. It, this is the fracture on the leg and every day that passes, the leg gets worse and they loses hope because his trust is on his wife. His trust is on man, but his trust is not on God. And the Lord does not want to heal you alone. God wants to save you. But if he is provide, the Lord is providing this to you tonight, he's knocking at the door of your heart. He's persisting so that he may enter and give a solution to your problem. Because this God that we serve, besides saving, he also heals. But he, he wants to save you first, and then he will heal you. Because if he heals you first, you are not going to be saved because you don't have a commitment with God still. Accept Jesus in your life first and your problems are going to be over. First, God's kingdom and His righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Here, we don't heal. The church does not heal anyone. If you came here and think, oh, that I can heal or someone else can heal you, you're going to leave this place disappointed. But if you believe that God, through His Son Jesus, has authority and power to save you and to heal you, you will leave this place healed and saved for the honor and glory and praise of the name of the Lord. The Lord also has shown through another spiritual gift that a man started a construction. When, when, when the construction was almost over, it was already on, this, on the roof, the last part, he got discouraged and he stopped the project. What is the Lord showing? The Lord has a project for you. I don't know who you are, but God knows. The Lord has a project for your life. You started this project very well and you need to finish it. God's not going to finish it. You need to finish it because God gave you this responsibility so that you can Finish this project that the Lord has to do in your life, on your behalf and to your benefit. In the past, God came to Noah and said, everybody's going to die. I have a project for you. Here it is. If you do this, you're going to be saved, Noah. Noah had an ear. Noah believed. Not Noah obeyed. Noah and his family were saved. That's what the Lord has for your life, my brother and sister. Conclude the project so that you may be saved. God does not need salvation. You are the one who needs salvation. Finish the project, what God told you. Complete it. When we make a vow to the Lord, we need to uh, fulfill our vow. And that's what the Lord is demanding of you tonight. I'm at the, the door. He is at the door right now. He wants to help you finish this project, that this work he started in your life. Amen. Let's let's sing a song.
Tu procuras a paz nesse mundo Em prazeres que passam em vão Mas na última Church, you stand up. Lord, we praise you, glorify you, for, uh, we praise you for this moment of fellowship, for everything that I have done to our people, to our church. We can glorify you, Lord, to you, and to praise you, and plead, Lord, that for each person who is here, so that your grace may remain upon their lives, and that you may give a week of blessings by you, filled with the deliverance and the experience, and open doors. We plead, Lord, for your whole assistance, we pray in the name of Jesus. And let me say the wonderful grace of Lord the Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The spiritual gifts have been shared. We have come to the end of the service. And if you desire a prayer, a clarification of what was said, of what you heard tonight in this place, you're here at your disposal. We say that you are welcome. You can come many more times in our 
presidential service every Thursday at 8, every Saturday here. We have a special service with w the women and at 7.30, a service of qualification. Every Sunday morning at 10.30 in the morning, a Sunday school. Every Sunday around this time, 7.30, another service of qualification to the Lord. And you are all invited to participate.